For this tutorial, you will need your selected yarn. You can use any yarn weight for this. I'm using the Bellacoco Crochet Super Soft Chunky. This is an exclusive yarn found in one of my Crochet Society boxes. I'll leave a link in the description box below if you want to find out a little bit more about that monthly subscription box. I'm going to be using a five and a half millimeter with this yarn. But you can go ahead and check the belly band of your yarn to see which hook size it recommends. You will also need a pair of scissors and a darning needle for when it comes to sewing in your ends. As always I'll leave a link in the description box below with all the information that you need including the link to the blog post on my website of the written pattern in case you find that a little bit easier. There'll also be a pinnable image on there as well so that you can save it to your Pinterest board for later. Don't forget to share this video with your friends if you enjoy it and also subscribe and click that bell button to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so to begin we're going to create a slip knot and you can do this in whichever method you prefer. Go ahead and insert your crochet hook and we're going to begin by chaining a multiple of two. So that's yarn over, pull through, that's one, yarn over, pull through that's two and then you keep going until you get to the length of chain that you want so whatever project you're doing for example if you're doing a blanket you want this chain to measure the width of your blanket what you want it to be so I've just done one two three four five six seven eight go ahead pause the video chain your foundation chain and meet me back in just a moment Okay, so I have just chained um, 16 for my sample piece. We're actually going to start in the second chain from the hook, so not the one that's on the hook. This is the first and this is the second. We're going to start by using a double crochet. So remember I'm working in UK terms. In the US this is known as a single crochet. It's the same stitch, just a different term. So you're going to go into that second chain yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll have two loops on the hook and then yarn over, pull through both of those loops on the hook. We're then going to chain one and do another double crochet into that very same stitch. So into the stitch like so. We're then going to skip a chain and then work that exact same repeat into the next stitch. So, so skip a chain, go into the next chain and do double crochet or single if you're in using US terms, chain one and double crochet. Skip a stitch into the next stitch, double crochet, chain one and double crochet. You're going to repeat that all the way along until you get to your last chain. So go ahead, pause the video, work that all the way along and then meet me back in just a moment. Okay, so I've just come to the end of row one. We're now going to do row two and row two is simply going to be repeated for the entirety of the stitch. So what we want to do here is we've just done a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. We don't want to chain one or anything at this point. We just want to turn our work. Now what we're going to do is find that chain one space. Now this can be a little bit tricky to find because you automatically presume that this is the chain one space and it's actually not. So if we have a look at our stitches here, we have a V, a V and a V. So these are three stitches. This is a double crochet, this is the chain one and then this is a double crochet. So if we also have a look down here, we have a stitch here, a stitch here, which is slightly, it looks quite wide um, and that's where people can make the misconception that that is the chain one space. It's just because it's pulling over to the other side. So actually we want to go in between these two posts here because that is under the chain one space. So we go into there. It does get a little bit easier to see as you are building this stitch, but it can be a little bit tricky on your first few rows. So we'll do a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet into that very same stitch. So we're going to move across and then find that chain one space. And we have a stitch here, and then we have a stitch here. 
And then can you see we have almost four posts? So one, two, three, four. It's right in the very center of those posts where we want to go. So here is the chain one. And we'll do a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet. Moving across, finding the next set of stitches, and we go into the middle and do exactly the same thing all the way across. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So you want to pause the video, work your way all the way along. Meet me back once you get to your last set of stitches and I'll just clarify exactly where this, these stitches go. So pause the video and then meet me back in just a moment. Okay, so I've just worked my way to this last set of stitches. So we have a stitch here, the chain one space, and then a stitch here, which just looks slightly different. So we're going to go into that chain one space as usual. And we'll do double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. You're then going to turn your work and repeat the same thing. So you want to find that chain one space. So for the first, you might want to turn your uh, work so that you can see the one, two, three stitches to begin with. And then it's just under that second stitch where your chain one is. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Onto the next set of stitches, you'll find that the placement is where these two posts are actually closest together. So in here, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And this is what you do for each and every row. So as it builds, it does get easier because you almost see the line of where your stitches will be going. So if I just bring this sample piece over here, so you can just see these lines of where the stitches go into and it just gives you a little bit of a guide. But this is a beautiful stitch and it looks beautiful on both sides. So it's a really versatile stitch as well. So you just keep building your work until you get to the height that you want. And I think you'll agree that it's a really beautiful, beautiful pattern. So as I say, there's going to be a link in the description box below of where you can get the written instructions and I'll have all of the information on that blog post as well. Like I say, you can pin it as well to your Pinterest board to save it for a later date. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all of my latest videos. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye.